think, uh, of course, you have to see that uh, the Gripen is a new fighter. It's being introduced into service and it has all its operational life ahead of it. So I think that's one of the main uh, differences when you look at it from an air power perspective. We will have a brand new uh, sensor suite, all the capabilities built into it. And with the avionics system we have in Gripen, we will have something that is ready for the future, that we can upgrade for years to come. So it's going into service, not out of service. I think that's a big difference. And also in the package and the solution we have for make in India, we have a true technology transfer. We are not talking about manufacturing. We are talking about development, research, everything that comes with an aerospace industry. And to be able to transfer that technology and the capability to India and Indian partners in a true technology transfer. So that really is the uh, basis of our offer. And this is a national way for us to do it. We always work with partnerships because we're a small country, uh, 10 million people, and we have to find partners in the world. And we see a huge opportunity, as you said, the, century, the deal of the century when it comes to fighter aircraft to team up with India around this for the future as well. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things that, you know, with the discussion in the media, it is the hottest subject right now. Yeah. And uh, I'm so happy that I'm interacting directly with you because through you we give our readers yeah. a feel of what, what it is and they, they can also know the facts. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things mentioned is that, uh, you know, the, the fighter yeah. F-414 uh, uh, F is, is of American origin. So would that come in the way of technology transfer? Not that we see it. If you look at the grip and, and all the uh, export we have done, we have never had an issue ever with uh, technology from the US. And also you have the 404 in the LCA today, for an example. And engine technology is not critical today. I mean, it's commercial technology basically. It's available out there in the marketplace. And also for the more sensitive systems, like for electronic warfare systems, the software for the avionic system, that is all Saab uh, controlled products. So we can offer that to India. So we don't see any limitations and any uh, thing that's going to be a restriction for us. With President Donald Trump clamping down hard yeah. on, uh, on you know, for taking jobs out of the yeah. United States, you think your competitors will not be able to provide you know, manufacturing in India? I don't want to speculate in that. I don't. Anyone really knows what uh, Mr. Trump's uh, inten intentions are. It's too early to say. But uh, so far, I, I think it's uh, it's not helping them. <laughs> not helping them. We we read somewhere that you said just like you can add apps yeah. to your you know mobile. Yeah. That way you have a lot of scope for improvement in the SAP. What are some of the improvements that you are looking at, yeah. which India could possibly benefit from yeah. in the years ahead? Yeah, and, and the thing with the apps is going down basically around the uh, avionics system that is a very advanced solution for the Gripen. And here we actually have made an avionics system that is where you have independence between software and hardware. So you can upgrade the hardware and make use of the very quick uh, speed of technology development when it comes to computers. Uh, when you have computer power, memory capacity and so on, and you can plug, plug the new computers in there and it will not have an impact on the software. And you can also develop the software in modules uh, like apps. And of course this means you can team up with partners. We all know you can develop apps all around the world for your iPhone or your smartphones. And then you can just plug it in. So this is a lot of a more uh, flexible solution and uh, we don't see anyone else to have a solution like this. And this is technology that we will share with India. Uh, you know, we, what we see in India is we've created a sort of an emergency situation for ourselves. Yeah. In terms of the fact that, uh, you know, we were supposed to get a uh, certain amount of the rabats. Yeah. And because of the cost factor that quite obviously it did materialize, we're getting just 32, that too by 2019. What are the time frames that you are looking at? As we see, as military veterans from outside, we need 200 medium category combat aircraft and we need them fast. Yeah. You know? Oh, that's so, 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 how does SAP view this? What time frames 
do you see these aircraft coming in? Yeah. I mean, uh, there is obviously a, a great need in India for, for a new aircraft. And, and first of all, I think the, uh, uh, the, the policy for a strategic partner has to be released so we know how India wants to see the Make in India concept and how we should work with that. But once that has been released and there is a request and we have been selected, uh, we will move forward very quickly. For an example, the development center we have set up in Brazil, where we have research, development, manufacturing and flight test. We've done that in 10 months. So we now have a Brazilian engine. 10 months. 10 months. Uh, and uh, for a start, not complete of course, but for a start. And now we have a Brazilian engineers working in that facility with the development of the two-seater, doing the uh, real development work. So uh, we have a proven concept how to do this. But of course we have to listen to the customer and to India to understand what you're looking for. And we are making plans already how to proceed with this in a good way. Because we have to be ready. We understand there is an urgent need for the Air Force.